everyone. Welcome to episode number 28 of the Reseller Stew. Today we're going to be talking about, um, I guess, beginner questions and going over some of the more common things that beginners um, start, um, you know, need answers to and things that we've heard over time. Um, I have a couple things I'll go over and I know April had one and we'll just see how it goes. Make sure to go ahead and post your questions over in the chat. Started out with like a big capital question or maybe a bunch of question marks or something that way it's easy for us to see um, your question because sometimes they scroll down really fast and we just miss them. <laughs> it's, like, it's not on purpose, guys, promise. So um, how's everybody doing this week? Great. Good, 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 good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually did some work on Saturday and yesterday. I... I didn't list a lot, but I listed like 10 things, so it's better than nothing that I've been doing, so yay! Definitely. <laughs> but um, I haven't gone shopping at all. Any of you guys gone shopping? Not as much as I would like. <laughs> I know April's been, you've been super busy with your job, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you get to move again, yay! Yay! I should actually, um, I'll probably start that today, so. Yeah, but it's just right across the hall, so at least it's not, like, across town. Yeah. And I don't have to move any furniture because the apartments are furnished, so it's not the big deal that I'm making it sound like. I don't want to move, though. I, you know, I kind of, in a way, want to move just because I think it would force me to get rid of some of this extra stuff and give me a chance to really start over. Um... I know I talked last week about um, getting with celery and trying to get some of this stuff out of the house. And the more and more I look at it, the more I'm just like, yes, that's definitely something that I want to do. And I need to just take all of my items that are like $30 or more and just send them over there, get them out of here. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Tanya? You don't, you've gone shopping, right? Yeah, um, I actually got up Saturday morning. Well, I laid in bed forever, and then I saw Margaret posted that she got some awesome items at a garage sale, and she got me all excited. So about 9.30, I decided to get up and go. I didn't really find a whole lot. Um, I found this little Juicy Couture lemon handbag. Isn't it cute? Oh, you should keyword that lemonade. <laughs> yes. Keyword yes. that lemonade, Tanya, for Beyonce. <laughs> It was only a dollar. I was like, how much do you want for this? She said a dollar, and I said, okay. And then I got I got um, a jewelry jar, so I've been working on that, seeing what's in there. So not, um, not nothing big, but. Adam Hazard posted that he just bought a jewelry jar, I think. You, you and Margaret with your jewelry jars are getting around town, that's for sure. Yeah, they're so much fun. <laughs> I actually saw a jewelry jar, finally. Um... I think the time before last that I went to Savers, they had two of them sitting there, but I was just like, I don't need that. Like, I don't <laughs> need to bring that into my house. Yeah. Because I'm just going to sit there and be like, okay, I don't know what any of this stuff is. I, I don't even personally wear a lot of jewelry, so I don't even know the terms of anything. It would definitely be <laughs> something that I would have to research and learn a whole new set of skills to do jewelry jars. Yeah. Hi, Robin. Hey, Robin. Robin's here. Hey, Robin. Yeah, long time no see. It's so <laughs> good to see you. I'm glad. I when I saw that you were on the way, I was like, Robin's coming. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Did you do any shopping recently, girly? Um, just been going to the Goodwill outlet like once or twice a week. So. Are you finding of anything? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you finding any new brands that we haven't heard of? Um, you'll have to give me a minute. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> You're our brand queen, so I know you got something we ain't never heard of before. I'll see what I have in my brand box. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just taking a look over in the chat. I'm looking, Joe said that my hair almost fits into the screen, and that is really <laughs> funny. I never thought I would be known as the girl with the big hair. I they, love your hair. It's my favorite. <laughs> it is my total favorite. Oh, it's so much. 
to maintain. But I'm sure Robin gets that because she has those girls with all that. Oh hair. yeah, all that hair. It takes an hour to comb through her hair. <laughs> an hour, and that's like on the um, conservative side. <laughs> so, because her hair goes all the way down to her booty. So yeah. But it's fabulous, though, especially after it's all done and curly and out, and yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Stuff. I love it. Okay, got that. Um, I haven't done any shopping at all whatsoever since we talked last time about the shopping I did a month ago. I've been, at least since I haven't been working too hard, I've at least not been bringing anything new in. So that's fortunate. I did list this thing that I bought the the Miss Noah. I went ahead and put it yes. I think I put it on auction. But it's made in the USA, so and there's not one like it and How much it's on worth point. So and it's a Santa. Yeah. And so I looked on Worth Point, and there was nothing for, like, Miss Noah Santa that was like this or this particular size. It's really big. It's 24 inches. And um, so You already put it up for auction? I, I did. I put it up yesterday or Saturday. I can't remember. And um, I actually put a lot of my store on auction. I went ahead and flipped them over because I had, I don't know why, but I have, like, four auction promos. And I, I'm hmm. not sure why they needed to roll me out that many auction promos. Let me see. But I have a lot. That's crazy. I just got that one. I have list 500 auction style listings for free, including buy it now. That one ends tomorrow. I have one that's list free, 1,000 auction style or fixed price. That one ends on the 31st, and then I have one that's list auction style free up to 500 in select categories. Dang. And, then, and that one ends on August the 1st, and then, okay, I have three. But that's still more than, why do I need so many? That is a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I put like 140 things on auction yesterday just trying to drum up some action in my store. Because things have been like super slow, my sales are down like si over sixty percent. Me too. Me and, too. Very uh, slow. Yeah, I mean, my graph looks pitiful. It's like a sale, and then three days later, a sale, and then three days later, a sale. I'm like, okay, this is this is sad. Bad, but it, it's my old. I haven't. I wasn't doing anything. We were on vacation, and then it took me a little bit to get back into it. And Saturday was the first time I listed really at all in a pretty long time. So, but I'm hoping that these auctions might drum up some stuff. But their views are super low. Like some of them have zero. One, two, and you know all of those are bots if it has one or two. So I'm I don't know. I have to right see. Now. Huh? I'm running a sale. What's a sale now? But I'm not getting any sales. You know? Yeah. That stinks. Yeah. yeah my, graph I, I, my graph was looking really, really bad for like the last. I don't know, two months or so, and I think it had a lot to do with the fact that I just, I was like, yay, summer, and not doing anything. <laughs> so once I started seeing, you know, the implications of not working, um, I, I'm finally starting to see it increase a little bit. I also think maybe it has something to do with the summer is going to be winding down here pretty soon. I don't know. I don't know, but... Yay. I'm excited. Yeah. My kids go back to school August the 22nd. Oh my goodness! It's like right around the corner for you. <laughs> oh, that's been a month. Yeah, I'm excited for school to start back. Not because Maria is any trouble or anything, but just um, it puts me back on a schedule. Exactly. You yeah, know, too. and it forces me to wake up early. Even though recently I've been waking up, like the sun wakes me up, 
And I sit there and like force myself to go back to sleep. And I'm like, why do I do that? Why I did that this morning. I was up at like seven. And then I'm like, I don't yeah. really feel like getting out of bed yet. <laughs> and then I got out of bed at like 10. But I don't sleep well in the morning, like, because the sun's out and, you know, like, I don't know why I do that. I'm Hopefully with school starting and I told Maria that I wanted to start walking her to school because it's only like less than three quarters of a mile away. So it's pretty close. The only problem is, is like there's this huge uphill. And so if you want to bypass the uphill, you have to extend your route by like half a mile. So we go ahead and hop it up the hill. But yeah, it's That's pretty good. Yeah. But she that wants to do that. Yeah. So I want to start doing that because the dogs like to go walking anyway. So maybe that'll make me more like, you know, stay up. Because I need to get more stuff done during the day because she's not going to do after school care this year because she didn't like that she got home so late. And so she felt like she wasn't getting to do enough stuff before it was time to go to bed. So, so we won't be doing after school care this year. So I'll need to go pick her up. Yeah. But anybody have any really awesome, amazing sales this week? Like between the last week? I don't think I did anything. I it, didn't. I feel like I shouldn't even be on this show right now because it's like <laughs> I am not doing well. <laughs> like, I found like, my brand I learned about. Oh, what is it? I have a brand. It's called Ash, A S H. They were boots. So let's see. Um, A S H. Oops. Those look very I normal. Sold a pair. Yeah, they do look very normal. I sold a used pair. It had some scuffs on the toe and everything too. I sold it for eighty bucks. Nice. Were they the studded so ones? They... Being studded. Mm -mm, no, they were. Um, let's see, ash black leather. They were knee high. They came up to right below the knees. These sell for really good money. Let me go ahead and share. This are the pre-owned, so these are used, uh, ash boots, soles. That's pretty decent. A hundred bucks, a hundred and fifty-six mm -hmm. bucks, seventy-five. Yeah, I saw. I found it at. I found my pair that I sold at the bins. So I paid. It was a dollar nineteen per pound. So I didn't weigh that much. Um, and then I sold them for 80 bucks with scuffs on the toes, no less. Wow. That's how I was talking about that. Let me see if I can see what the logo looks like. Hard to really see in that picture. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's hard to see. Is um, this what it looked like on the inside? See. That A -S -S I couldn't see. Because mine were pull-on boots, they it was imprinted on the sole, um, oh. right behind the um, heel, but it was very light. I still was able to make oh, it out these though. Are so ugly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ugly sales, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, cowboy high heels! Wow. That's... I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> okay, so that's what it looks like on the bottom, the A S H. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it right there. Man, those woo. No offense to anybody wearing those right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I'll definitely have to keep an eye out for those then. I was gonna make a comment. I have to say it. Those shoes are good for one place and one place only. Do you know where that is? <laughs> The line dance, the, the the line dancer. <laughs> he said they're not good for standing. <laughs> mm -mm. <clears throat> I don't think I had any. Let me see. I don't think I sold anything except for the only thing that was notable that I sold was that um. I, that I actually posted about was my dancing, my dancing Jack Skellington, because he came out of a plush bag. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so he only cost me like probably fifty cents. I sold this guy. 
And he dances, see. He's so ugly, he's cute. Yeah, he's from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> Maria never liked it, so. But yeah, as he dances around. Somebody told me, you shouldn't have other things in the background. And I'm like, you know what? I was just working, and I'm not Spielberg. All I wanted to do was show that he worked. <laughs> 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 it served its purpose, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. What about you, April? Do you have any really great sales this week? Anything super fantastical? No. I was more fax machines. No, I'm having an issue. <laughs> That's why I was saying that I hated Amazon earlier because I'm having an issue with the most expensive fax machine I have. I just ordered to have it sent back to me because they suppressed the listing. It was just a, a big hoopla. But um, I've been selling a lot of suits, but there's nothing spectacular about selling. So <clears throat> to go into our topic for today just right now while you're on it, um, what do you look out for? when you're buying suits so that way anybody who's new that might be trying to you know go into that area what would be your advice for them because I stay away from suits I don't touch them at all mm -hmm. um, the number one thing um, I would say is if you want to get into selling men's dress items suits are the best place to start because a lot of um, the mistakes that people make when they try to start venturing out into this, um, this beach is they'll pick up orphan um, suit jackets. And it's hard to tell that sort of thing when you're new to selling them. But what I typically look for, number one thing is the brand. And my best advice that I always tell people is if you would buy a shirt in any brand, chances are the suits do equally well. Um, there are a couple of notable exceptions for me that the biggest exception would be Brooks Brothers. I'm not always going to pick up a Brooks Brothers shirt. It, there's a lot of other factors that come into play, like condition, um, the fit, the size. But 99% of the time, I'm always going to pick up a Brooks Brothers suit. Just because, I mean, I probably sell more Brooks Brothers suits than anything else all the time. Um, the other thing that you, you want to pay attention to is the size. The bigger, the, the more money you can usually get because big guys have a hard time. Um, and they don't like to go out. They don't want to go to the store and have to go through. I imagine buying a suit is like buying a bathing suit for women. I imagine it would be equally frustrating. Probably, yeah. Maybe that's why you see so many guys in like ill-fitting suits, just because <laughs> they just don't want to, you know, go through the trouble of getting it, either spending that much time trying to find the right one or getting it tailored. Or spending the money for yeah. it, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and. I know somebody posted a, a photo not long ago and they said um, it was like two guys in a suit and one guy had on a really bad fitting suit and one guy had on a very tailored fitting suit mm -hmm. and the first one was like has a court date and the second one said has a career. Oh, that <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I didn't like, see that. It, it's, yeah, I have to find that. It was pretty funny. But um, I don't know. Uh, any man who can wear a suit well is going to look good. And I find that people who like very nice quality suits um, love to buy them on eBay because you can literally save hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars by buying them on eBay, sometimes thousands. Mm -hmm. um, because I've, I've found a Keton suit. I've sold Briani suits. And, you know, some of these suits, they retail in the stores for two, $3,000. So that's, that's why I love them. Is that how you say that? Is it Keton? I always thought it was Kitten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one who does that. <laughs> we tell you about the brand, but I have no idea how to say yeah, it. That would be me in the store. I'd be like, what kind of bag is that, Louis Vuitton? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I had no idea. I should look those things up so that way I don't sound ignorant. 
I also a video not long ago of um, models pronouncing designer names, and it was like A to Z. It was the A to Z video. So some of the hardest names out there, Xenia was one of them, actually. Um, it just had really pretty girls pronouncing these really difficult names, and it's, it's very enchanting. I would recommend it. This is what April does in her free time. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Do you have any really good sales this week, Robin? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Other than your, your ash boots, I guess. Yeah. What about you, Tanya? Any? What did you say? Any good sales? Yeah, do you have any good sales this week? No, not really. No. We're just really <laughs> So informative. I can't stand it. I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so we did have some questions in the chat, right, Tanya? Yes, uh, Barbara Coulson had a couple questions. Cool. So well, yeah. she, okay, she asked, um, we were on the fence whether to do FBA or Merchant Fulfill. Which, which do you do and why? Do you want to go ahead and start since you? Okay. Um, I would probably say initially it might be a little easier for you to try Merchant Fulfill just so you can get in the habit of actually um, doing some shipping. Um, but if you're going to do FBA, I was telling the girls earlier, it might be best just to start off with maybe, you know, like a handful of items, maybe five, just to kind of get you going and um, to get, you know, to see how things work. Maybe start off with just a few. I would recommend both, really. I mean, you're going to make money either way. Yeah, there are a couple of mistakes that people make when they first start selling Merchant Fulfilled that they don't realize. Uh, Amazon gives you a shipping credit. It starts out at, what, $4.95 or $4.99, and then they give you an extra, what, $0.50 cents for every pound. So you got to really think about it. If you got an item that's 10 pounds, they're not going to give you enough money to ship that item. And I exactly. see that, yeah, I see that mistake a lot, especially when people are selling video. I mean, uh, board games, and board games mm -hmm. can weigh a lot. I mean, they four or five Definitely. pounds, yeah. and you're only going to get a credit of what seven dollars, and mm -hmm. there's no way you can ship it for seven dollars. So you have to keep that into consideration whenever you're pricing your items for merchant fulfilled. Right, and that would probably be something you might want to send to FBA, so you don't have to hassle with the shipping. Yeah, because when you do FBA, uh, it's so inexpensive to send things in. It generally costs about fifty cents a pound. Yeah, when you're very cheap. Yeah, I mean, if you got a small box of stuff and it weighs five pounds, it might cost you four dollars to send it in. You know, five bucks. Yes. It's not super duper expensive. Um, do you have any suggestions on that, April? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I've only done FBA because that's what you taught me. That's all I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that one of the biggest mistakes that Tanya said is people tend to try to, I don't have enough stuff to send in. No, if you have five things, you've got enough stuff to send. Right, in. and quit overanalyzing it. You know, just do it. Just, just go for it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I really think that very first shipment is your learning experience. And I think sometimes people, they keep reading and reading and reading, and then they have all of this yes. information, and they get overwhelmed, and they're like, I don't mm -hmm. know what I'm doing. And if you really just simplify it, Amazon has a um, getting started FBA PDF, and it goes mm -hmm. over all of your items um, if it's this kind of item, it needs to be packaged this kind of way. It needs this kind of sticker. It's like a checklist. And that's what I did my very first shipment. As I sat there with that printout, and I went down the checklist, and I was like, okay, this needs an expiration date sticker. It needs a suffocation sticker. It needs this. Put it in the box. Okay, moving to the next thing. And, I mean, once you get through that first one, you're pretty good. You, yeah. That's really and advice. Let's see. What else do we got for questions? Um, Kathy B is asking a question of what about free shipping? I guess for eBay? Ooh. Might be for Amazon too. Because I know they just did a uh, 
um, migration where you had to go over to the new account. And you're supposed to be able to offer free shipping on your items for merchant uh, fulfilled. I have noticed some people doing that, and I'm thinking, how are they doing that if they're not I FBA? And I can't I do it. I, uh, really? I migrated, and it won't let me do it. I have an old account from, I like, 2000. Yeah. yeah. Well, you ha you need to because they'll, they'll make you stop selling if you don't. What? They told me, like, at the top of my uh, Seller Central, it says that the, if I don't do it, like, I don't know, in 30 days or so, that they're going to do it for me. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it says if, if you don't want to migrate, it basically closes your account, I think. So, I went ahead and migrated. I'm going to go do that as soon as we're done. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. I, I wouldn't depend on, you know, Amazon to do it for me just in case. You never know. You don't want to get caught in a glitch, you know. Yeah, that's true. Like, you were supposed to do it for me. <laughs> nope, sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm not sure about the free shipping thing because it, it's not available to me, so I can't answer that question. She's saying um, I know it's supposed eBay. to be oh, on eBay. Kat, Kathy's asking about free shipping I don't on eBay. Think, I personally don't think that new sellers should do free shipping until they understand shipping. I see a yeah, lot of people. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of people and I'm sure everybody does that they're not making any money and they don't know why. They're selling things and it's coming out. I mean, they're just not making anything. It's not worth their while. They don't understand it. I wouldn't do free shipping until you understand how shipping works, how much it costs. I mean, I can just from experience, and I'm sure a lot of you two can't. A lot of you can. If something's two pounds or three pounds, I can sit here and I'll know how much it's going to cost to ship that item. I'm like, okay, well that's going to be ten dollars, whatever. You know, this is going to be this. Um, you need to get familiar with your boxes. Know how much a box weighs. You know, your little boxes are going to be five ounces, or your, you know, bigger boxes are going to be, you know, a pound. That's the way I do them, you know, and I just add that on. So. You know, I also met a lady who, whenever she first started selling on eBay, and she had a terrible, um, like, bill at the end of the, you know, the eBay fees and all that other kind of stuff, and then she never tried it again, and I was talking to her about, well, why was it that way, and it comes to find out, not only was she doing free shipping without understanding it, but she was also selecting the bold my title, italicize my, you uh -huh. know, condition, all that kind of stuff, she thought that if she added all of that onto every listing she put up, that that would be a good thing for her to do. And so she ended up owing like three hundred dollars at the end of the month um, and not having the sales to even cover it because she added all of those things to every one of her listings. So yeah. Yeah, that's an alley. That's a that's a hard hard one to learn. <laughs> like a mistake to learn. Yeah. Um, okay, so we had another question about I guess Amazon fees on how much are taken out. I I give the percentages at about 30%. Unless your item is low cost, the lower the cost of the item, the more percentage of the fees it really seems. So if you've got a $15 item, you can say that your fees are going to be half. Mm -hmm. So then on top of what you paid for it, I mean, you can come out really low on making profits. So you have to be careful about the lower cost items that you buy why a lot of people talk about it being volume as opposed to because you're only going to make two bucks right but if you have a higher dollar item you know and it's 49.95 and then your fees are going to be twelve dollars well that's a much lower percentage than you know unlike eBay where it's what pretty standard at ten percent right yeah, I usually, if I'm out yeah. in the field and I'm doing the calculations in my head, I always assume one quarter, 25%. And that's usually pretty safe for me in the margins in which I work. <clears throat> okay, so I guess, um, Tanya, do you want to? Uh, Kay Free has a question. They say, is there a way to offer 
on the options regional B box shipping, and uh -huh. that's for eBay. So when I don't know much about that regional boxes. I don't use them. Oh, I use them all the time. Really? Yes. Right. <laughs> um, regional boxes are great. Uh, you can't offer them in your listing. Uh, it's just priority mail. What you understand about regional boxes is if the item's going to fit into a regional A box, which the most common one that I use is this one. It's a great size. It'll fit shoes that are up to about a size 7. I mean, you can fit a pair of like 7 Danskos in these. And, you know, it's a really good size box. And it ships at a 2 pound, two pound rate. So you can put in your listing that the item is 2 pounds, you know, and that'll come up. It'll cover the cost of the shipping in a regional A. And then you're only going to pay like $7.65 for the regional A. But they'll charge the customer, I think, nine, $9.45, I think, is the rate that they'll charge them. And then if it's like further away, it's 10 something, and you're going to pay $8.98 for it. So you're always going to pay less. So you just put it as two pound. Regional B, I don't ever use. I don't see where that would benefit anyone at all because it's the same size as a medium flat rate. A medium flat rate is cheaper than regional B. Um, regional B ships at a four pound rate. So um, if you're going to offer regional B, I'm not sure where it would really benefit your customers to offer it unless they live in your state, which then it would be cheaper for you to just ship at regular priority mail. At a four pound rate. You know your stuff, don't you? <laughs> I know shipping pretty well because I, I charge shipping. Yeah, so I, I charge shipping. I don't do free shipping. Um, so I know, you know what the customer pays, what I paid, and, and all of that stuff. So um, regional B boxes, I would just use them to ship priority mail. You can alter a regional B box. It's part of the, um, what do they call it? The post office, D, whatever it is. They're thing, all you have to do is just mark through where it says regional, and you can um, just ship it as priority mail, because I really like the size of this box. Yeah, but, I've done that. Yeah. So you can alter a regional box and just ship it priority mail. I've shipped, I like to ship suits in those. They're like the perfect size for suits. The region B's. Regional B's? Mm-hmm. You don't find that the um, medium flat rate is cheaper? Uh, well, I, like much my, the same. I think they're the same size they, box. They are. They're almost identical. I think the medium flat rate might be like half an inch bigger in one in one way. It depends, though. But the region B's have been cheaper for me on occasion. On occasion. Um, there's a question about label sizes. In your browser, you can adjust your label sizes to whatever size you want. And if you're printing them on a regular printer, then they'll just print out slightly smaller. Um, if you buy the labels, if you have a Dymo 450 or any Dymo, if you buy the labels that are the 99019s, they're long and skinny. And they work a lot better to ship on smaller packages and envelopes because you can put them around the side because the track uh, the scan is on the first part and it's pretty small and then you can just put that on one side and then you can wrap it around the other side because you never want to wrap your barcode. Yeah. So I would try buying some of those. But in the meantime, if you're just printing on regular printer, I mean, you can select the size you want your paper to be. And it'll print it on a regular size paper, but it'll print it smaller. Can we back up for one second? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So I pulled up a table, and I know for me, because I lost my top rated uh, seller discount, and I, I don't even know if that plays in the shipping, but it cost me like $11 and some change to ship medium flat rate. Is that, does that sound right, Deb? Um, yeah, but you do lose some money um, when you lose your top-rated seller because you do get an additional discount on shipping. Yes. So the Region Bs, if you're in Zones 1 and 2, which are pretty local to you, they're only $6.71. Mm -hmm. 
And then if you watch the zone three, it's seven dollars and ninety cents. So all the way up to zone five, and I don't understand the zones completely. It goes up to like ten dollars and sixty six cents. So there absolutely are occasions on where a B box. That sounds like A box prices. It's on a B. They're pretty similar for regions one, uh, zones one and two, but obviously the B box starts increasing exponentially once you get up to zone six. It's thirteen thirty seven on a B. But in zone five is ten sixty six. Yeah, so for me in Texas to ship to New York on a B box would be thirteen thirty seven. But for the same general size box to ship a flat rate is eleven sixty. So it's a two dollar difference. Yeah. And yeah, and I live a little because of my location in Ohio, I have mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of my stuff goes pretty close. A surprising amount of my stuff goes over to Pennsylvania, which is why I use a ton of B boxes. They're pretty cheap if you're just going one state over. Yeah, it is really um, because that's your closest one of your closest regions. Now, on the other hand, if I just shipped a four pound item to New York, it would be twelve ninety seven, which is still cheaper than a regional B box for me. Yeah. Um, there's a, a shipping calculator that's available through eBay, and I can go ahead and post a link to that. I use it quite a bit, um, for that way I know what it's going to roundabout cost to ship the item. It also does comparisons for FedEx and US, uh, UPS. Uh, in my two cents, it's saying the regionals are priced to region. Yeah, that's why they're called regional. They go region A, I mean region 1, 2, 3, 4. They go, the further away it is, the more expensive it's going to be. Yeah, you, do, you would not use something a region box to go from um, New York to California. No, yeah, it's going to be cheaper for you to ship a different way. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, Tanya said it's raining. We've been getting lots of rain too, Tanya, but right now yeah. it's funny. But it just got really dark. I mean, it's coming down hard right now. Yeah, it did that yesterday. Like, all of a sudden, it went from sun to just kaboom. Right. Storm, and then, <laughs> you know. Um, Robin, you, since you're doing a lot of clothes, how do you do your shipping? Because I know that's, you know, normally clothing is a starting point for a lot of people. Um, how do you manage your shipping? Did she go away? Is she not there? She's there. I have, um... No. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think she's freezing up on us. It disappeared. Uh. Because <laughs> <clears throat> I had somebody ask me on a video um, on how to properly measure a poly bag, and I thought that was a really odd <laughs> question. <laughs> and i would never heard that before, and I'm like, well, I, I don't, I, I guess the way that I was thinking about it, and I really put a lot of thought into it, like, some of the largest bags I have, like, is this one, which is, like, a 12 by 15, and then I also have a bigger bag, wherever it might be, oh, here, that's slightly larger than this one, like this, but if you, if you really think about it, if you're putting something in there and it's expanding like this, right? That's the same size as a 13 10 by 10 box, which is like the default size for a standard shipping. So you're not going to get charged oversized or anything like that. So if you think this big old bag filled... I could put into a 13 10 by 10 box. So you really just need to put your default size as 13 10 by 10. That's what I do on all of my listings because that is a regular standard shipping size. And you're not, you know, it's not considered oversized. You only want to worry about like the size of your item is if I believe what you have two or more sides over 12 inches. Or if you have a size that's like a side that's like 15 inches, you need to worry more about. So if it's any bigger than 13, 10 by 10, 
just measure it because then you have to worry about oversized stuff. Thir and just in case you didn't know, 1310 by 10 is the size of a large priority mailbox. Not flat rate, but a large priority mailbox, the standard one. So you're back, Robin. Okay, so what advice do you have for shipping, shipping to close? Um, I, I do free shipping on all of my clothing items, and um, I can, I've been selling clothes long enough now that I can kind of tell by just the feel of them how much they weigh, if they're going to weigh over 8 ounces or not, um, and I ship everything first class, so everything up to 8 ounces is like $2.40, so I add that on to the price of the item that I'm, I'm going to be shipping, and then if it's over eight ounces, I just add the extra amount and just do free shipping that way. Stuff it in a poly mailer if it's going first class. If it's something that's over 16 ounces, then I usually use one of the flat rate envelopes. I want to bring it. that clothing is super simple. <laughs> While you say that again um, on the 16 ounces, I want to bring that up one more time um, on um, making sure that if you have something that's shipping that you know is going to be over the 13 ounces but less than the 16, don't put 14, 15, 16 ounces as your, even though it says first class, don't put over 13 ounces because it's going to charge your customer one pound priority. Um, right. Just leave it at 13. You're not gonna. You're still gonna pay less than what they are charged because they're gonna get charged for what 435, 465, something like that. 435, I think. And and you're gonna pay 365. So even if it's 16 ounces and they're only paying for 13 ounces, you're still paying less than what they paid for the shipping cost. If you put it as 15 ounces or whatever, they'll end up paying $6 and some change for a first class piece of first class mail. So I learned that the hard way because I was like, why are my customers getting charged six bucks? You know, it's a first class package and it's because I was putting 15 ounces. Yeah, you're the one who, you're the one who brought that to my attention. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up again, even, just so, you know, in case it didn't. Yeah. Because that was a mistake I made, because I, I didn't know. So, um, what kind of questions do you get, Tanya, on, like, beginner questions or things that you hear often that people need help on? <clears throat> really, um, what I already said about the books, you know, people uh, ask what, like, what kind of books to look for. And I always tell them, like, definitely not the, um, the mass market paperbacks. Like, those usually aren't worth anything. And, and even the hardback ones usually aren't worth anything, really. Um, unless you take them to half price books, then you might get some money for them. <laughs> so really, like, if I'm at a garage sale and they have a whole bunch of them and they're cheap enough, I'll pick them up and take them to half price books, you know, and get some money for them. Uh, I have to, I've done stuff like that with children's clothes before. There's a children's consignment store here, and if I find, like, nice brand children's clothes at the um, yeah. Goodwill outlet, you know, score those and take them right down the street definitely. and sell them for, like, <laughs> twice as much, and they just give you cash. Yeah, that's nice. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't ever really look at the books at all. You would think that I would pick it up because Tanya does a lot of books, but I don't. I stay away from them. Um, but I know it's some place that people like to start as well. That's why I was asking because it, it seems right. like an entry point kind of thing. But then you see that question all the time. How are people making money on penny books? You know? Yeah, I still don't know how people make money on penny books. That's beyond me. I mean, they must figure if they're making a quarter and they're selling in volume. Uh, I mean, you know, that's the only way I can think that they're making money. Well, they make money off of the shipping credit because, you know, the minimum shipping credit they're going to get is $3.99. Um, yeah. But it might cost them, you know, two seventy-five, three dollars $3. It just doesn't seem worth it to me. I, yeah. It, It'd have to be a really lightweight book, right? Yeah. So I think you're definitely right that it's a volume business, and it's a volume business I am not interested in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did wanted to show something while we were here. Um, 
I get asked a lot about multi-channel fulfillment. And so I just wanted to show what it looks like when you do a multi-channel fulfillment order. So let's just say I have something cross-listed. And somebody bought this DVD that I have, right? So I would go over into my active listings and I would just click on the side and create a fulfillment order. And all you have to do is <laughs> fill in the information for the customer. You can even put an order ID if you're trying to make sure you link it up to like something that is on eBay or whatever. And you click continue. And then you can see the fees here are really, really low on a DVD. It's $1.90 for them to ship it for you because I guess it's going to go media mail. And then it's 60 cents for them to pack it, 45 cents for the shipping weight. So $2.95, and it'll be delivered by August the 30th. So it must be faster than media mail. They must be just shipping it smart post maybe. I don't know. Um, but Wednesday, August the 30th, it'll be delivered if it's standard. So that's a really inexpensive kind of way to ship the item. It's not, I keep trying to tell people that the fees are really low and they don't really understand, but it, they really are super low. Um, if I had, I'm trying to find something a little heavier. Let's try this joystick. So if I do that and I create a fulfillment order for it, And it has a shipping weight of six pounds. They're charging me five dollars and twenty cents for to send the item for me. That's cool. So that's what I mean when I say that it's really inexpensive. If you are gonna do um, multi-channel fulfillment for your eBay orders, if it's gonna be shipped um, standard mail you need to make sure that you have like a three-day handling time on your listing because they're not going to provide you the tracking number for a couple days. So, and that's fine. You won't lose your top-rated seller. Top-rated seller just means that the item needs to be shipped within its handling time. You will not get the 20% credit on that item because it's not top-rated seller plus. And Top Rated Seller Plus means that it needs to be shipped within that one business day or less. So, but you won't lose your Top Rated Seller by having some some items out, you know, with a longer handling time, three days or four days or whatever. You look confused, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you're sending some items to Amazon for storage, yes. but you're selling on eBay. Yep. That that's is what, so cool. Yeah, that's what multi-channel fulfillment really means. It means that Amazon is has the item, but you're selling it on another channel. So you're selling it on your own website, or you're selling it on eBay, or you're selling it on... I want to try that. Is there a minimum amount that you have to... No. See? Just get started. Just do it. <laughs> Any of your FBA items are available for multi-channel fulfillment. I even asked a, a rep one time, I said, well, I have some items that I don't really want to sell on Amazon, but I want Amazon to like store it and ship it for me. And she said, well, you would be able to do that. The item has to have a listing, but it doesn't have to be for sale on Amazon. She said, what I would have to do is I would create, uh, either create the listing and then when I sent it in, I'd have to put the date that it was a for like available for sale in the future so that it's not actually active on there. And you, so it's something that if you have questions on that, because I'm not an expert on it, but um, on that area, we could definitely contact Amazon. And that's what I always advise everyone to do because Amazon is very helpful about answering questions because they want to make sure the sellers are doing it properly. So contact Amazon anytime you have a question about that. Cool. Yeah. So now any of your FBA stuff, you can do multi-channel fulfillment, and it's really cheap. And even if you do the two-day shipping, it's not that much extra. I think it would have cost like twelve dollars or whatever instead of the six. You know, because they're. So 
I created a listing on eBay too? Yes. That's kind of like along the lines of me selling Merchant Fulfill, but I also put them on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I can do the same thing with my FBA inventory. Yeah, and just make sure, because to follow the rules of Amazon, you can't sell an item that's on Amazon that you have there for more, I mean, for, for what is it, cheaper or more or something. I'll have to look it up for you. But there's like a pricing thing they want to make sure that you're not... Probably compete, cheaper. Right? Competing against yourself, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Like that you're not taking away from the Amazon business to give the business to another avenue and then using them to ship your item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it help. I mean, I, I have things listed. I do multi-channel fulfillment orders. I don't know, once a month, I guess. I'll sell something. Um, and then I did post about, um, I don't know if people are familiar with Kiwi. Kiwi offers several different eBay um, like applications that kind of help you. They have a key to do which reminds you, hey, I need to ship my item out. It's you know running out of time. Uh, there's a key feedback and all kinds of stuff. Well, I, they have a key, uh, that's K-I, uh, MCF, which is multi-channel fulfillment, and what it does is it actually takes your Amazon listings and it posts them on eBay. And then whenever it um, sells, it's going to automatically generate a fulfillment order for that customer and send it. So it's kind of like an automatic process, and then you're not uh, worried about double selling things. You happen to sell them at the same time. Yeah. Let's see. We could probably do a whole show just on that multi-channel fulfillment. I know everybody. I, everybody, like everybody in the world. Um, it's fascinating to me. Like I want to try it. I've been asked several times to make a multi-channel fulfillment video, you and should. I just haven't gotten around to it. I think because I don't feel like I'm an expert at it. Like I feel like I would give out some wrong information that. You know, um, just because I don't know everything about it. I think you know a ton about it. Just say like a disclaimer at the beginning that you're not an expert. You know, yeah. but these are the I'm things. I'm just trying to help, but I don't really yeah. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> I'm like, I know nothing. <laughs> but if you want to listen, that's okay. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have any other questions in the? Um, I, April had to take a, a um, job call, so I guess she's gone for the day. Let's see. We're good. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to touch on, and I noticed yesterday, my international options for eBay had been dis selected, deselected. So I want to show you how to make sure that your items are showing up internationally and it's not costing you anything extra. So it's free advertising for your listings on the eBay.UK or eBay.HongKong or eBay.Germany or eBay, you know, all of the different eBays there are and there are a ton. You'd be surprised. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Um, I told Ronnie about it yesterday. He went and checked it and all of his were also not selected. And then right after that, he said he got a sale from England. And he's like, I don't know if it was a coincidence or not. But, you know, when he told me to do it, then all of a sudden I got a sale. So I'm what you're going to do, do. Okay. So what you're going to do is go up into your account settings so that it brings up your options. You're going to go into your site preferences on the side. Oh, site preferences. Yep. Yes. Okay. On the site preferences, there's one here. Now, this is for Seller Manager Pro only. So, if you have a store, you should be able to bring this up. If you don't, it might just be for regular Seller Manager. But it's something to watch out for. Um, Gladys had mentioned it recently, and I went in to check it yesterday. 
So on your Seller Manager Pro area, if you have it, you're going to go on the list on these worldwide eBay sites and edit it. Mine only had the U.S. selected. Oh. Not any of the other ones. Mine just says Selling Manager. Okay, so you, you probably you don't have Pro then. Okay. And what it do doesn't have, have this option on there? For the you have an anchor store? No, I have a premium store. What do you pay premium on that? Uh, what is it, $59? Oh, okay, I only pay like what, 15 or whatever it is? Yeah, you have the basic store. Yeah. Well, heck, sorry. That means I can't check it then? <laughs> I guess not. I'll have to look into it further. <laughs> um, what that does and why it benefits you is like this. Okay, this is eBay UK right, for the United Kingdom, and I put in an item that I actually have for sale, a German uh, wooden puzzle. So you see how it comes up with all the people, and then if you scroll down, it'll have the option for, where is it? I probably scrolled past it. Here it is. You scroll down, it has the option of found on eBay international sellers, and you can see these ones are all from the U.S., so this is on the eBay UK website, but there are international sellers. This one's in Canada. This one's in Australia. And my listing, and then this is where it comes up under the bottom under related. Those are the ones where it doesn't have all the keywords in the title. Um, my listing is right here. So my listing's coming up on the eBay UK website as a United States seller. And so that's what that means when you select those. And it doesn't cost anything extra to do that. So on all of those websites that were, you know, eBay Germany or eBay Poland, eBay China, it'll come up on those international sellers for that item. Deb, you are always a wealth of information. <laughs> Brian keeps asking about the my other store, the, the I see that. where I was going to put all the roosters. <laughs> and I haven't listed anything yet, but I did buy a rooster. It's a Ooh, hand That's blown. pretty. Yeah, it's a hand blown. Like, it's really heavy. But I got it. And then I have the stuff that you sent me. And um, I just haven't gotten around to it, but I will. I've just been posting other stuff because that particular store was just going to be for fun. And right. So right now I'm just trying to actually go through the stuff that I'll make money on <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to my, uh, my little, you know, hobby. Yeah. Little hobby. I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather make some money. Me too. But, um, did you have anything else you wanted to go over this week? You got anything special going on or? Uh, no, not, not that I can think of. Yeah, me neither. I'm going to try really hard to start putting out beginner videos. I keep getting asked to do that. I said in my last haul video I was going to start doing that just because I get so many people that are asking me questions, and um, I need to just make the videos. Yeah, it's a great idea. So I keep talking about it, but then I haven't gotten around to actually doing it because then that means I need to put on makeup, <laughs> and brush my hair and then make the video and I don't end up doing that so I need to start because yes, I know people, yeah people ask about that multi-channel fulfillment quite a bit and um and then also about shipping it's just I, I guess it's just a hurdle that seems so complicated but it really isn't as long as you know kind of the checks and balances of it you know and I hear people say all the time I don't want to pay for boxes well you know what benefits me about knowing the sizes of my boxes i know how much they weigh right you know i know my eight by six by fours my six by six by sixes my eight by eight by eights i know how much they weigh i know the 10 by 10 by 10 how much it weighs and then the priority boxes i know how much they weigh so it makes it easy whenever i'm doing my shipping when i'm doing well when, when i'm putting my prices for shipping because I have my scale right here. I just put the item on the scale and then I know what box it's going to go in. So I can add right. eight ounces to that or I can add a pound or whatever. You know, it just makes it easier. So 
I like to keep my boxes consistent and I like them to be fresh. I don't like my boxes to have Amazon paper on it or, you know, craft macaroni and cheese on the outside <laughs> of the box, you know, or it's got all these other shipping labels on it because it got delivered to Dollar General and I took them out of the trash. You know, I like <laughs> nice, clean, fresh boxes. And I know people don't agree with that. But that's my own personal preference. I just prefer that. Because I used to get boxes for free. I was a merchandiser at yeah. Walmart and Target. And I could take all of the boxes I wanted. Just a thousand boxes. <laughs> if I wanted a thousand boxes. But they all had stuff on the outside. They all said, you know, I, sh I have a story <laughs> for you. And it's old story, but it's worth telling again. One of okay. those boxes <laughs> I picked up from Target when I was working there. I had all these boxes, right? And I shipped a vintage light bright. It arrived at the woman's <laughs> office and um, she couldn't find it. Well, while she was out for lunch, apparently it had been delivered. And the staff took it and put it in the refrigerator because it said there was eggs inside. It had <laughs> eggs on the side of the box. <laughs> so this light bright spent the weekend in the refrigerator and the, her staff was asking, so what are these eggs that you got from Texas? Like, are they <laughs> special? <laughs> so anyway, that's where the light bright went because it had eggs on the outside of the box. Please keep refrigerated. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. She, she got a real kick out of it. She thought it was the funniest thing ever. But... <laughs> Anyway, uh, we have a question about where do you buy your shipping supplies? I, I buy my shipping supplies from a box store that's right by my house called Half Price Boxes. Um, and then I also buy the boxes that they have at Walmart. They have a really good price on some of their boxes. Like yeah, the I buy my boxes there too. Yeah, the 14 by 14 by 14 boxes that they have are like 67 cents. Yeah. And um, they came out with some new sizes the last time I was there, which I don't go to Walmart very often, but they had like ones that were longer. And so they were maybe like a, a 12 by eight hmm. by, you know, 12 by eight by eight or something. They were like a right. smaller, longer box. I picked up some of those and they're, you know, not expensive. They're, right. I think they were, I don't know, 48 cents or something. And, and then just, we get a lot of the free ones too, right? From the eBay shipping supply store. I think, yes. uh, I don't know how to say her name. Solo Luna? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, Sole Luna. So, get a lot sun, of boxes. sun Moon. <laughs> um, yeah. I, so ordered, sweet, I, see? I wouldn't uh -huh. have put that together. <laughs> I ordered boxes this time when I ordered, used my coupon for having a store. I bought tape. And I bought boxes and I got a hundred boxes just because it made them come out to be like 37 cents a piece, which is the equivalent of what I pay now. I think I pay 34, 36 cents a piece for the boxes that I buy at the store by my house. So, yeah. and they're being delivered to me and they have the eBay logo on the side. So 37 cents Very a box nice. isn't bad. And I use them for yeah. first class shipping. And I'm good on tape. I won't need tape for like, I don't know, two years or something. I kept getting pulled into, like, the more that you bought, the cheaper it was. So I think I ended up with, like, 24 rolls because it came out to – I didn't want 36 rolls because I didn't need that many. So I ended up getting, like, the 24 rolls. Yeah, I won't need tape forever because, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it comes to the end of the show today. you have anything else you want to go over? Um, I don't – no, you have any new special videos you got coming out? You're gonna put out got anything planned? Yeah, I'm gonna do the um, the jewelry jar video. I got everything ready. I just need to uh, piece it together. So hopefully um, later today or tomorrow. Cool. I'll Make sure to post the yeah. link over in the stew page so that way we can catch it. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for staying with us today and watching the show. Hope to see you next week. I don't know what we're gonna talk about, but. If you have any suggestions, <laughs> send them our way. So, but I hope everybody has a really great week. Bye. Bye.